Any questions? Hmm. Uh, you are talking about happiness, and these definitions uh, sometimes <coughs> look me ha too high because maybe to change uh, uh, the definition by uh, saying happiness uh, uh, instead happiness a satisfaction for life because happiness is, is uh, me too too high. Yeah, yeah. Even if you say satisfaction, yes, you are right. Happiness means satisfaction, yeah. But the satisfaction what? Temporary satisfaction and long-term satisfaction. Again, similar, you see. Because, because if you, it's the same, basically. If you are okay with just temporary satisfaction, then okay. But if you are not satisfied, if you want to get more, then naturally you have to look for long-term satisfaction. So whichever word you use, we are basically saying the same. Okay? Um, you say when the child Just is... Moment. Okay. When the child is uh, born, he is... Okay. Okay. When the child is born, he is... Uh, First thing is looking for happiness and uh, love. Yeah. And for this is what a person, a human being is. Uh, so is this seeking, doesn't it create also the attachment for my happiness? Like yes. me and mine, I mean, even this looking for happiness yes. is creating some kind of attachment. Yes. My happiness. Yes, ordinarily. Ordinary people, when they seek happiness and peace for oneself, then again it's mixed with attachment, craving, grasping. So therefore we are saying that since you are seeking that long-lasting peace and happiness, that long-lasting peace and happiness will not come through grasping to oneself, it will not come from attachment. It will come by removing the Removing the grasping. Okay? But even the spiritual so called happiness is like my spiritual happiness. No, no. My non attachment. No, you don't have to say my. You, I mean even if you if you use the word me or mine, it should be done without grasping. Without clinging. So that grasping, clinging, that's the problem. In order to get that long lasting peace and happiness, you don't have to have that grasping. Not only that, if you have that craving and grasping, you will get more problem. You see? So it is not that if you don't have the grasping, you will not get peace. That, that's not the, not the way. It's not the thing, yeah. Yes? How, how do I open? How do you release it? How, how do you release the grasping of worrying for someone? Say that he's ill and he's yeah, deteriorating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're grasping that somebody is ill when you think and worry about that person with grasping. Does it solve the problem? But what does it mean? What does it mean? In a mentally or emotionally releasing the grasping of this to this person. That means that your main concern is how to help this person. That's your your concern. Okay? If you want to help that person, the best way of helping that person is doing the job, not grasping or not worrying. It's doing the job with calmness of mind. Okay? If you develop grasping and craving and obsession, you hang on to the object. You obsessed with the object. Then you are not able to see things from a distance. What is the best way of helping? What is the best solution? You are not, not able to do that. You, you, you get mixed with the object. That's the problem. No 
questions? No challenges? <laughs> There's a challenge. There's another challenge down there. What about uh, small children? About uh, helping them not resting and it's much more challenging <laughs> about other people, you know, young, not ourselves, ourselves. Challenge, uh, challenging, challenging is not the answer. To say that it is challenging, it is difficult, therefore I should do it. It's not the answer. You see, in life there are many things that are difficult. But being difficult does not mean that you should not do it. Like even getting food is not easy, it's very difficult. But if you say, oh, getting food is very difficult, therefore I should not do it, there's a mistake, you see. So it will be challenging, it will be difficult, but if you realize that my grasping will not help me or help the child, it will only bring more misery. That's the thing, you see. Even in a family, the father or mother who is the sinner most, because of his or her life's experience, that father and mother normally will, when they encounter problem, they will show less sensitivity and emotion. You see? Say, oh, no, no, don't cry, don't cry, no, no, we'll find something, you see. The younger ones who have not, not no experience, they'll cry and what happened, you know, what to do, you know. But the more experience, they'll say, no, don't cry, don't cry, we'll find something, you see. Something like that, you see. So, so many of these disturbing emotions, they, they, they cloud your mind. They make you unstable. I'll give you an example. For example, if here is a, say here is a car. Now I'm standing here, okay? Now when I develop attachment, then I'm saying I want this car. I'm already doing like this. Look at my feet. Now he's ready to fall. I want this, you see? Mm -hmm. You're destabilized already. You're being pulled in that direction. A person or object, whatever. I have to have this. There's no stability now. So that's the meaning. This negative emotions. Negative emotions, one. Now this is very important. This negative emotions, number one, they are narrow-minded. All the negative emotions, anger, jealousy, ignorance, hatred, they're very stupid, narrow-minded. Like for example, when you get angry, normally they has to have a single target. You know, you get angry with this person, that person, you know. So you, will, you will not get angry with the whole world. Sometimes they say, yeah, I'm angry with the whole world, but they're just saying, you know, there's no way you can get angry with the whole world. But you, you normally you have a specific target. I don't like this person. I hate this person. So out of so many things, they, they, Negative emotions, are, because they are very narrow-minded, they have to select one object, you see, just one thing. So you can, you can see that the, the whole holistic attitude is gone, very narrow-minded. Number two, they have no sound reason to, to back them up, to support them. There is no proper foundation. No reasonable, no logical. Three, when this anger or negative emotions arise, it makes you unhappy. You see, that's the definition of negative emotions. Negative emotions are those emotions which when arises in your mind, makes you completely disturbed and unhappy. This you can easily see when anger or hatred arises. When anger and hatred arises, you get completely disturbed, you see. So angry, your body even shake, you know. Turbulent. Your mind is confused, you get turbulent. You don't know what you are saying, you see. Makes you completely confused. Anger and hatred. 
when attachment and desire arises, it is not so turbulent like that. It comes in a very gentle way. <laughs> I love you so much. I need to be with you. You know, like that. <laughs> Looks very nice. But in the long run, very destructive. Anger on the spot, very aggressive, but it may be less lasting. <coughs> but attachment, just like a drop of oil that falls on and sings on a piece of cloth. Mm. It says there, your mind goes to somebody, day and night you remember that. You see? So, if you look at the world, the fighting that is going on everywhere, on different levels, either hatred and disliking, or attachment, for wealth, for money, for whatever, you see. All the wars have been, fighting have been like that, from time immemorial, even today. Wars have been fought for women, between kings, you know. Wars have been fought for wealth. And today also it's happening like that. For name, for religion, for wealth, stupid things. So therefore when these negative emotions arise, it agitates you. It makes you turbulent, vulnerable, instable. But when you remove these negative emotions, you're calm. So now choice is yours. Choice is yours. Whether you want this turbulence all the time or you want calmness. Choice is yours. Karma, choice of hate. So I'm saying, choice is yours. Karma does not mean that your fate is forever sealed and you can't do anything. Many people get wrong understanding of karma. Karma means action. I met, even here in Israel, I met a person who said, I don't believe in karma. I said, what do you mean? I don't believe in karma. Why? Because I see some people keep on doing bad things, but they are successful. Some people keep on doing good things, but they are not, not successful. So I don't believe in karma. So that is his very superficial understanding. Then I said, you don't believe in karma? He said, no. Do you believe in action? He said, yes. So, so karma means action. Karma means action. If you say, I don't believe in action, then that's the end of your story. <laughs> you see? Why, if you don't believe in action, why you go to school? Why do you work? I mean, our life is full of actions, and we engage in all those actions, expecting that something good will come, or it is good for me. It is, I need it, you see. So karma means action, action of the past life, action of this life, action of future life, action that you did this morning, action that you are doing right now, so many kinds of actions. So that's karma. So what you do now, as I said, you cannot change the external situation, but you can change how you think. That's karma. How you react. That's karma. What will you do? That's your karma. So, so therefore, the choice is there in your hand. Okay? So, if I understand you correctly, there is no reward in karma. You're doing good for changing your mind. Yeah. You're really good to yourself yeah. and yeah. to the others. Yeah. But you're not going to get any price in the end. You're not going, I mean, it's just a way of life. It's choosing your way of life. Yeah, choosing your way of life and by the right choice, you're going to get a lot of things. Like, for example, if you say, it's my karma, I don't, go to, I don't want to go to university. I don't want to study. Then you will suffer because you don't have the education. When you don't have the education, you don't get good job, whatever, you see. So you suffer, not doing that karma. So karma means action in general. And when we do the Buddhist practice, then we are talking about positive action, not destructive action. Okay? Because we want happiness, as I said earlier. So, the choice is 
in your hand. Actually, giving you the tools to to live and to deal with. Hmm? You see that hmm. microphone? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm asking if it's what you mean is that it's actually giving you the tools to deal with things. Because if I will do good things and be kind, it doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to me. I exactly. Just know how to deal. Exactly. With it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because even if you want to do good things, that does not mean you don't do bad things. So for the good doing, you will get good results. For the bad doing, you will get bad results. So just doing one good thing doesn't mean that all problems will disappear. You see? So you need to realize that you have so many karmas of this life, your way of doing things, past lives way of doing things. So you will get suffering and problems, those things also. But what I'm saying is, if you continue to appreciate more of these positive actions, then you can lessen your suffering, reduce your suffering. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you do one good thing and then boom, all the bad things will disappear. Not, not that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Hmm. Okay. I was wondering how do you suggest to handle situations? How do you suggest uh, to handle situations when <coughs> you are in uncertain uh, uncertainty and um, it's made even something bad, for example, a family who learn or um, a family who one of their dearest is in a hospital on and off all the time. So this... Uh, these people who... Um, yeah, have, how can they have calm? Because they don't know what to expect. So if their son would have been died, they would mourn and go on. If he would be alive, they would be happy. But if they live in this uncertain and it's being with all the tension all the time. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. When I said, what is outside of you, you have no control. That's what I said. So there may be many things that you can control. There may be many things where there is uncertainty. <coughs> but even under such situations of uncertainty, things are not under your control. But at least from your side, you can do the best. What seems to be best, you see? So that's the only thing you can do. You do the best, based on your reason, based on your common sense, you do the best. <coughs> then that person recovers, gets well, of course, you're very happy that I did my best. Now it's successful, you know, I'm so happy. I spend time, I spend money, so, so happy. Now somehow if that person dies, then still you will not regret. <coughs> because you will say, from my side, I did my best. But I cannot change everything. I cannot control everything. So no regret. That's the thing. So that's why we very often, you know, recite these very famous words from Shanti Deva. If it is something you can change, do not worry because you can change it. If it is something you cannot change, do not worry because by worrying you can't change it. <laughs> you see? So that's the thing. So that attitude must be there. The most important thing is from your own side. You do the best, using your common sense, rationality and so forth. And then if, like for example, your own personal death, you know, you are going to die, it's certain. Now you ask me an uncertain question, but I'm telling you, certain. Even, even in the area when it is certain, what, what will you do? That's the problem with the human beings, you see. 
death is certain, but how much, even after knowing that death is certain, how much prepare, preparation we are doing? You see? That's the thing, you see? So therefore in life, you know, do your best so that you, you don't have to regret. That's the thing. If you don't do your best or don't play your part, then there will be regret, you know, I wish I've done something, you know, I, it could have changed it, but I did not do Then it's useless. Then it's useless. So that's the problem with us. So you're saying that uh, even the, the action of trying to get control of, of what you can reduce and suffer? Hmm? You're saying that even the action, the proper action of trying to get control on on what we can reduce and suffer? The action of trying to... Trying to get control of, of what we can. In all what we say, can or what we cannot? Can. What can we can. On, on okay. Out of all the uncertainty of life, mm. trying to get control by action on what we can control reduces suffer? Of course. Action? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because then you know I'm doing my best. That other person will know that he or she was here all the time, you see. Trying their best. Yes, the thing. Yeah. So what does it mean to do your best in terms of not the external ac um, actions, but in terms of the mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of your mind. Yeah, in terms of your, your mind. Tension. Yeah, in terms of your mind, you need to develop this understanding that my worry is not going to solve the problem. Okay? My worrying about the situation, my anxiety, my feeling unhappy of the situation is not going to solve any problem. So therefore, with calmness of mind, with understanding of the situation, I will try my best and then rest is not within my control. So that kind of emotional stability and understanding is the best way to deal with any difficult situation. Now, what is this thing called action? <coughs> karma. Karma is of basically of three types. The karma or action done by the mind, <coughs> then as a result of motivation, the karma is instigated by the mind, the karma that is done physically and verbally. So there are three kinds of karmas. Physical, verbal, and mental. Out of this, as I said earlier, the most important thing is the one that is done by karma, the, the mind. And when I say mind, it could be a good mind, bad mind, positive mind, and negative mind. If it is a... So most of the destructive karmas, they are a result of negative emotions. Most of the destructive karmas, they are a result of negative emotions. And there are countless negative emotions. But the most destructive primary negative emotions are ignorance, hatred, and attachment. So it's important that we spend some time on this. Now out of these three, the real boss is ignorance. So normally if you have seen this picture of the Baba Chakra, the cycle of the wheel of life, mm -hmm. you have seen that in the very center there are three animals. A rooster or a 
a pigeon sometimes, and a pig, and a snake. So the snake and the bird, their tail, their tails are in the mouth of the pig, meaning that that hatred and attachment also comes primarily because of ignorance. So that's why again you can clearly see why knowledge is so important. Why knowledge is so important? When we don't have the knowledge, then we see suffering as happiness. We see suffering as happiness. And we see what is impermanent as permanent. We see what is without self as having self. And what is empty as not being empty which is known as the four misperceptions. Can you, can you say it again? Can you say it again? I have no time to say again. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what, is, what is suffering as happiness? Okay? What is impermanent as permanent? What is impure as pure? And what is without self as having self? So these are the four. These are called four misperceptions. Now what is impermanent as permanent? In our ordinary life, whatever we are experiencing, even situations, people, you know, they are all impermanent. True, they're all in a flux. They're all momentarily changing. Nothing abiding even for a second. It's changing, impermanent. Because they are produced by their respective causes and conditions. For example, we are born in this world. Okay, we are born in this world. <laughs> And because we are born, because of this birth, we become older. If we are not born, we will not get sick. No question of getting sick if you are not born. No question of aging if you are not born. No question of death if you are not born. But do we understand this? that something is wrong with the birth itself? No. We say, happy birthday. <laughs> the Buddha said, birth is suffering. Aging is suffering. Sickness is suffering. Death is suffering. But we say, happy birthday. Again, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that you should not celebrate birthday. But what I'm saying is, to understand the meaning, the importance of understanding birth itself as a source of suffering. <coughs> the birth itself is the cause for the death. That's the reality, you see. That's the reality. So therefore, once you understand that, that everything is impermanent, in a flux, in a changing all the time, there's really not much reason to develop too much attachment to somebody or disliking to somebody. For example, I'll give you an example, a rare example. If there is a somebody here who is terribly sick and also a lot of wounds, you know, with pus and blood, whatever, 